Okay guys, I'm Randall, this is JJ at CropMeGotTraining.com. In this video we're going to go over the defense against a headlock from the side on the ground. And the one I want to cover specifically is when the attacker's weight is forward and there's space to allow you to get to your knees. So there's a problem that comes up with this defense that happens when our students pressure test it. Let me explain what that is. First, let me demonstrate the, the default technique that's in the curriculum. So, as you guys know, you get with the headlock from the side. You turn your side, get your basic positioning, and because I can't, wrap the leg because the legs are curled up. That allows us enough space to get to our knees, and then the default technique is to pull back on the shoulder, spin around, get on top, go to our combatives, and escape. Excellent technique, by the way, and I love it. But here's a problem that's gonna come up where this technique will fail, this defense will fail, and this is what it is. Once I grab here and get to my knees, what if the attacker really keeps his weight forward? So knows JJ has the attacker's weight it's really far forward. He's a lot stronger than me, and I try to pull back on the shoulder, I can't. So here's the solution for this. So let me explain what I did. This is your backup plan in case, in case you can't make that defense work. So, cut the shoulder, get to my knees. Because his weight is so far forward and I can't pull his weight back, I'm going to take advantage of this by actually driving his body forward. So this hand's going to stay on the side of his shoulder. This hand right here is going to control his hand or wrist, pin it to the body, now from here, I'm going to put all my weight on top of my left shoulder, right in the middle of his back, by getting up on my toes, tripoding up, hips up to the ground. Now notice how I pull my right shoulder back as I keep the stand pinned. And this is putting pressure on the shoulder, which makes him break his grip. Not only can I have the option of injuring his shoulder, but more importantly, it allows me a chance to duck my head out, get free, take his back, go to my combatives, and escape. So I'm going to do it again, but from a different angle. So we're going to turn it this way down. I tried the initial defense, the, the standard defense. I can't pull him back, it's not working. So I'm going to turn this way so you guys can see. This hand, grab the wrist, pin it tight. Your shoulder, put all your weight up on it. Get up on your toes. Now watch how I pull my right shoulder back. I put all my weight on my left shoulder. This puts pressure on his shoulder. Not only cause injury, but more importantly, to break his grip. So I can duck my head out, go to my combatives. So basically what I'm doing to JJ, he's flattened out like this. My shoulders in the middle of his back to keep him pinned to the ground. And as I twist his body, I'm basically putting him in a downward shoulder lock Kimura. Like this. Even if I don't get the shoulder lock, it doesn't really matter. It'll force him to break his grip. Then I should be able to duck out and go to my combatives and escape. One more time, please. Can't pull him back. Try it. Go to your combatives. One other thing you can use for this technique is you can use this as a setup for the other technique. And they work in combination with each other. So this is what I mean by putting them in combination. If JJ is in tune with what I'm trying to do, and he feels this pressure on his back, his natural response is to start sitting up. So I start trying to track caught up. When it's failing, what I'll do is I'll go switch to the standard defense. The reason why this flows well is because regardless of which variations of the escape that I'm using, this hand on the shoulder doesn't move. It stays in the same spot. So I'll do that one more time. I'll drive my shoulder into him. He resists by leaning back. Spin him around. And then we go from there. And it works the other way around as well. I get to my knees. I start pulling back like this. And he knows that, so he starts driving forward. So, I pull with this hand to set up this move. So the beauty of it is regardless of how you resist, one of these defenses or the other will work and they work in combination. So basically, you're letting them pick their own poison. Either way, they're screwed and we're going to get out of this. Whether it's with the default technique of spinning around and getting on top of them, or this variation of the escape that I just showed you where you put pressure on the shoulder to break the grip. So if you haven't tried this before, try it. As a bad guy, keep your head really far forward and then the defender will realize, oh no. The default escape's not working. This is a good backup plan for this. So I'll try it out if you guys haven't yet. And uh, keep training hard.